Hello and welcome to Dexter and Wright TCG. We're over here. I'm going to do a set review for uh, Guilds of Ravnica. Uh, sorry for the delay, but uh, schedules sometimes conflict and therefore, you know, can't get together to do a set review. Uh, and rather than just do one by myself, I figured I get my boy Jordan back over here to uh, do another review. And so uh, we're going to go ahead and start this video off with the best card in the set. Assassin's Trophy. And uh, we're just gonna knock it, get out of the way. Um, everybody knows it's the best card in the set. It's like not even close. Uh, it's the best removal ever printed. Um, not even close. I know a lot of people are trying to say that uh, Lightning Bolt might be, but there's a lot of things that Lightning Bolt can't hit that this thing can. Lightning Bolt can't hit lands. It can't, uh, unless the Land is a man land, but even then it still can't kill something like a stirring wildwood. Colonnade. Or a colonnade, so yeah. Or uh there there's there's just way more applications doesn't for hit enchantments. It. Yeah, it doesn't hit enchantments, uh, which is red's bane, bane of red's existence anyways. But uh, ultimately, uh, Assassin's Trophy is not the best card not even close. So these are the other twenty two cards that uh, we're gonna go over that we'll see play or see testing in Legacy or Modern uh, or Vintage. Um, the, the amount of standard cards that is playable is insane. It's like the, almost the entire set is playable, almost, uh, with the exception of like 20 or so cards. So most, there's, most there, the there's really no point in going over every single card. <laughs> That's just crazy. So <clears throat> we're gonna start off with uh, outside of Assassin's Trophy being the best card on the set. Uh, they're not in any particular order. We just went through uh, Mythic Spoiler and just put them up there uh, so we can have them for reference. But the first one we have to talk about is Lasav, uh, the Multifarious, uh, with, which is a, a, a black and a blue for a 1 3 legendary creature, legendary creature shapeshifter. When he comes into the battlefield, it's a veil one. And then for X, Lazav the Multifarious becomes a copy of target creature card in your graveyard with a converted mana cost of X, whatever the X you paid for, except its name is Lazav the Multifarious. It's a legendary in addition to its other types, and it has this ability, so you can do it again. Um, so there's some sweet combo synergies that you can do um, with this card, um, but mainly this card has possibly rewoken uh, the deck called uh, Stifle Knot and Legacy, um, being able to have basically copies four through um, eight of Stifle Knot or uh, a Phyrexian Dreadnought with this card, like you can basically, uh, if it gets countered or, or if your original Phyrexian Dreadnought gets countered, then it's in the graveyard. So this, therefore, this guy can take advantage of that. So it's very sweet. Um, it, the, the, the application of it possibly being able, being able to revitalize that archetype, which is an old archetype, but it, this could bring it back to the forefront, and that's awesome to, to revitalize something that is, has kind of fallen to the wayside. So next up is... Uh, Tajik Legion's Edge for one white, one red, and a colorless. He's a legendary creature, human soldier, has haste, mentor, and he prevents all non-combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. And for one red and one white, Tajik's Legion's Edge gains first strike until the end of turn, and he's a 3-2. Um, I honestly think that he will see play in Modern. Um, <clears throat> definitely in the sideboard of humans. He just... Pretty much all of your removal is just going to be... It's, it's a lot of damage dealers. I mean, aside from... Assassin's Trophy, which that's just gonna, it's just not gonna get around that. Yeah. Um, it could literally have none of the other abilities other than prevent all non combat damage that would be dealt to other creatures you control. And it would still see and play. And it would still see play in that deck. Um, and then Mentor, and it gets first strike. It's and it's got Haze. Like, it, there's. <clears throat> there's just no downside the, to it. There, there is no downside to this card. Um, it's, it's awesome. Uh, and it. It's possible that it could see Bane deck play. I don't think so. I think it's it's maybe probably it's gonna a be one of. <clears throat> maybe it's a one of, but it probably is a two of in the sideboard. Yeah, I believe I believe it'll be a two of. Um, Mentor is very relevant though in that deck. Yep. Yeah. Um, 
because then you could just keep building up your uh, thalias or whatever, you know, yep. and uh, and you could even make... start building up your uh, your noble hierarchs. Yeah. Um, your hierarchs so or... it's 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 a very good the card. Lieutenants, any any of them? Yep. I mean, it also gets with a uh, pretty much pretty much all of them. Yeah, yeah, he's a he's a big boy. Um, now next up, I'll let you take this one actually because of the application that you um, saw. Um, so on. this is being, <clears throat> this is, uh, discovery and dispersal. Um, discovery is one blue or black and a colorless sorcery and it's surveil to then draw a card. And dispersal is one black, one blue and three colorless at an instant and each opponent returns a non-land permanent they control with the highest converted mana cost among permanents they control to its owner's hand, then discard the card. So basically, dispersal is kind of just, it's late game if you have um, control of the board, but the main reason you're running it is for discovery. Um, it's seen play right now in modern Grishol brand and actually a couple of other decks. Um, basically, the surveil too, you definitely want to fill your graveyard up and the draw card is also relevant um but like with grishol brand you just surveil too you see a grishol brand on top and a gorio's vengeance on top as well with the grishol brand and then draw the gorio's vengeance it's the card's surprisingly good uh, i kind of honestly skipped over it myself but it's being it's seeing a good good amount of play right now um, it it sounded upon first glance like a bad preordain yes because <clears throat> you have to pay an additional mana for it right. but this flexibility of it being able to pay a black mana for it instead of a blue actually has relevant applications yeah. um, and it makes sense for it to make uh, to work well in Grishel brand because you're working out of your graveyard anyway um, so you know if you mill over um, Grishel daddy or or, you know, or Brigmos, whatever, yeah. like you have <clears throat> those already accessed for you in the graveyard, so that's gonna work out well. Um, next up is Mnemonic Betrayal, or however you say the first, it's Mnemonic, right? Mnemonic. Yeah, I always get kind of messed up on how to say it. Um, it is a colorless white, or I'm sorry, colorless blue-black sorcery, it says exile all, all cards from opponent's graveyards. You may cast those cards this turn, and you may spend mana as though it were mana of any type to cast those spells. At the beginning of the next end step, if any of those cards remain exiled, return those, return them to their owner's graveyards, and then it says exile in my inventory. So this card <clears throat> is probably gonna see play in Legacy. Um, reason being is you have so much access to like being that blue is probably the most ubiquitous color um, it allows you to use other people's brainstorms ponders preordains all the fun stuff that modern doesn't have access to this card allows you to do that um, it's also gonna be a fun casual card to a commander stuff like that but this card I believe we'll see testing in like a Grixis um, shell or maybe even some sort of like uh, Nick fit deck uh, it actually has quite a few different applications that it can go into um, but if you can make enough mana um, you can just use your opponent's graveyard and you know continue on with your game plan play in storm yeah you could play it in storm because uh, both blue and black is played in storm so um, the ant version um, so yeah I mean you Cyborg and Storm, that'd be really good, especially in the mirror. Yeah, in the mirror, that'd be gross, actually. Yeah, that's just a cheaper version of Athens Flames, essentially. Mm hmm And so, yeah, I've, yeah. I've, I've heard that uh, three is a lot less than four. Yeah. So. Or five. Or five. <laughs> or five. <laughs> so, yeah, um, real good. Uh, next up is a card that... <clears throat> uh, go you ahead. Want, you, want, you want to pronounce it? Quasi-duplicate? Yeah. It's a... Uh, Two blue and a colorless for a sorcery. You create a token that's a copy of target creature you control and it has just a Now, this card, along with a few of the other cards, or another card we're gonna talk about on the list, 
Jumpstart changes the game. Having flashback for just pitching a card is nuts. It gives a great rate for something like this. Now, <clears throat> is this card have a genuine home right now? No. No. But there's the potential is high there. And I think it it can be tested in a few different decks. Um, you can test it in, in the Wizards deck. Um, you can possibly test it in the um, um, oh, I had it in my head. Um, um, shoot. Uh, you talking about the Spirits deck? Yeah, Spirits deck. That's what I was thinking about. Thanks. Um, because this basically gives you another, possibly two copies of Drug School Captain, and you already that that deck is already powerful because you have Phantasmal Image to copy it. Sure. So, granted, it's one more mana, but <clears throat> you can do it multiple times. And now you don't, uh, you know, basically you have access to a ton of different ways to duplicate the Droxkull Captain ability. Um, which, the Droxkull Captain is the main reason to run that deck. Gives you all your other spirits, plus one, plus one, and hexproof. So, this is uh, another card that can go in that deck. Um, and for three mana... It's not that's not unreasonable to come by, and no. if you're keep on drawing lands late, you just pitch that land and then copy it again. Like the the that the more times than not in uh, a lot of instances, jumpstart is going to be replicated in a lot of ways because you're just going to be pitching the land to replay the spell. <clears throat> now, granted, replicate doesn't mean that you in true replicate it it exile it doesn't exile from the graveyard. This will exile, out, but still, uh, that's basically what it's going to equate to. Is you're going to play the same, pay the same mana cost, but just pitch a land in a lot of those scenarios. All right, next up is uh, Night of Autumn. It's a one <clears throat> white, one green, and a colorless creature, Dryad Knight. When Night of Autumn enters the battlefield, you can either put two one one counters on Night of Autumn, or destroy target artifact or enchantment, or gain four life, and it's a two one. Uh, this is just essentially a better Reclamation Sage. It's, yeah. It'll just replace it in every deck Rex Sage we played in. I mean, that Rex Sage was splashed in occasionally. Um, a couple of... Like, uh, in Infect, so that that might not see playing there because of the white, but... Yeah. But that'd be the only thing. So what we're going to touch on a few times in this set is literally the best version of a card that already exists has been has, has now been upgraded. Upgraded, yeah. um, To show this set has the most power creep than any other set that I've seen in the past year. Um, like you said, it replaces Rex Stage. Like it, because it does Rex Stage's job plus more. Like why would you not do that? Now granted, the white splash may take it out of some decks, but I mean, you know, elves, there was already a blue, I mean, I'm sorry, a black green version of elves that's really popular. Which is you honestly could better right now. Yeah. Elves. And so you could splash white, make a jump. I mean, I'm not saying that it's necessary, Yeah. but, um, but yeah, there's, there's so many applications where this card is just so good it does so many things it's so versatile um i like i'm just glad they didn't print it as a human or an elf like the fact that they made it a dry at night was like good job wizards you didn't you didn't continue to just break the format over and over again uh that, that being a human just yeah mm -hmm. exactly that in humans just is mm -hmm. unnecessary so uh this is a, a really good card and uh will see play and a lot of decks, uh, and this will see also uh, play in in uh, Legacy and Maverick decks and stuff like that too. Like this is gonna be a multi format all star, right? Oh, definitely. Uh, next up is Mausoleum Secrets uh, for a black and a colorless. It's instant with undergrowth, and it says search your library for a black card with converted mana cost 
uh, less than or equal to the number of creature cards in your graveyard, reveal it, put it into your hand, and then sell from the library. Well, um, there seems to be this black creature card that a lot of decks are putting in their uh, graveyard these days, mm -hmm. um, paying two life to cycle it to draw a card. So this card just reads, how many ever, uh, what's the name of the stupid card now that I can't even think of? Street Wraith. Yeah. Now, how many ever Street Wraiths you play in the deck, uh, basically just make this card great um, at instant speed. Um, you can also go get a Death Shadow. Yeah, it, it, yeah, you can pitch a Street Wraith, then go get a Death Shadow. Like, that's just so dumb. <laughs> like, you're just furthering your game plan yep. with ease. Um, it's a I know, good thing it says black card. Yeah, no, if it didn't say just black card, this thing would be broken. Uh, literally broken. But, um... Your best creatures right now pretty much are black, so... Yeah, yeah. Um, so th this card is going to see play uh, in all of the shadow decks. There's no reason not to play this card in shadow decks. Um, it could see play in the new um, Abzan decks uh, that are going to be coming out, or mm -hmm. Junk. You know, if you're old school like me. Don't think it'll be um, a Jun. I don't think it'll be a Jun. Uh, Jun doesn't want that. Yeah. Jun just wants that value. But, um, but it's, it's, th this, this is going to see play. Guaranteed. Guaranteed. And it's possible that it sees play in Legacy too. Also in Storm. Yes. Uh, as another out to, um, uh, the tutor that they already have. Infernal Tutor. Um, not saying it's going to replace your Infernal Tutor, but uh, you know you can put extra copies in the deck um, to go to go even further, uh, so you can get your uh, um, or your uh, tendrils. Um, it would just have to play a few more creatures to get it to go off. But uh, but either way, uh, this 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 card is definitely going to see play uh, in a myriad of formats, um, and it's going to be sweet. Next up. Uh, next is Mission Briefing for 2 blue. It's an instant. You surveil 2, then choose an instant or sorcery in your graveyard. You may cast that card this turn. If that card would be put into your graveyard this turn, exile it instead. This is just literally Snapcaster on an instant with surveil 2. Um, it will be better than Snapcaster in some decks and worse than Snapcaster in others. Um, it's definitely better than Snapcaster in Miracles, so Miracles wants this card very badly. Um, it doesn't have a genuine home yet, but this card is too powerful not to. Um, oh, fair. It's, I actually think that you played this copy in Miracles. Oh, yeah, I, I can see it. Over. I can see it. it's just how many how many copies. You know what I'm saying? You just completely replace Snapcaster because of, because of the surveil, you set up your terminuses right, and, right, right. and all of your other. It's just the, and the then you can actually uh, play the other. Um, uh, you can play entreat at that point too. Mm -hmm. So uh, entreat the angels. Yep. So um, missions briefing, very powerful. Um, we're we're gearing it towards miracles, but it could find a home and uh, or it, it deserves to be tested. It's yes. a card that deserves to be yes, tested. Very much. Um, a lot of these cards don't have automatic homes off no. off off rip yet, but there's there's things that they're they're just inherently so powerful that they deserve to be that, that they deserve to be tested. Right, and and like that's not to say. Let's say that you're playing. You like playing control. But you can't afford Snapcaster Mage. Yeah, this is a very, very reasonable <laughs> and, second. And this card is this card is also going to go down in price from, oh, yes. from its initial price. Oh, yes. uh, it's going to go down because people are already starting to relinquish that it's 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 a good card, but they don't know where it's going to go. So the price, because it doesn't have a dedicated home yet, is going to go down some more upon uh, people opening more packs. Right. So uh, next up is. This guy's uh, jam right here. Um, so, risk factor is for a red and two colorless instant. Target opponent may have risk factor deal four damage to them. If that player doesn't, you draw three cards and it has jump start. So, <clears throat> this card is the better version of Browbeat. 
uh, for two reasons. It has instant speed and it has jump start. Um, burn is going to be seeing this car. I'm testing it and burn is a two of. Um, and the reason being is uh, for, for two, two reasons. Um, so remember how I was telling, saying earlier about retrace, you know, pitching a, a land to cast the card again? Well, in burn, you actually have it probably also apply to creatures too because burn's creatures get outclassed real early compared to the rest of the format. So if you top deck, you know, a monster Swiss, Swiss beer, like on a, when you have no more cards left or whatever, or they, you're staring down, you know, uh, just an empty board, the one damage is not going to be enough. Um, so you either gain three cards or draw, or I'm sorry, draw three cards or deal four damage. Both of those are better than a one two that has prowess um, in the late game. So um, this card, I it's going to be seen in standard play for sure. But as far as modern play, um, it's going to see. I, I'm testing it and burn. Uh, it's possible that I could see something, uh, see it in the uh, Wizards deck too, um, the blue red. It's seeing, it's seeing blue yeah. Deck. So it, there's 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 quite a few applications for this card simply because of instant speed and jump start. Those are two big things that make this a better version of Browbeat. So that's now two cards that we talked about. Uh, technically three because so, so Assassin's Trophy is literally just the best removal spell ever printed. But so that that's yeah. Uh, so there's now three cards that we've talked about that are just better versions of a prior card that existed. Next up. It is Swift Blade Vindicator. For one white and one red. Uh, creature, human soldier, double strike, vigilance, trample, and it's a 1-1. One, one. Um, I think the fact that it's a human is extremely relevant, obviously, as we keep coming back to Humans. Humans being the number one deck in modern. Uh, double strike, I mean, that's... All, all of the abilities are very, very relevant. Double uh, strike and trample are pretty yeah. big. Yes. Um, does and it, Yeah. Does it have a dedicated home yet? I don't, I don't no. know. No. Okay, it does not. Because humans, humans want creatures with abilities. Sure, sure. Except for the... Um, except for champion of the terms? Well, champion of the terms has an ability. Well, I mean, it gains it. Yeah, it but no, um, the, uh, the Mana Shrider. Oh, uh, yeah. The only one that yeah, yeah, Mana Shrider is a three mana card. Yeah. This is a two mana card. This is, it's almost exactly like Mana Shrider, except this doesn't have money. Yeah. It has a different form of, it, yes. uh, of, of evasion and trample. But honestly, this can get a lot bigger than Mana Shrider. Yeah. And it, and it has... I mean, you give it one counter, it's already bigger than Mana Shrider. Right. It, it's doing more damage yeah. than, than Mana Shrider. Um, so... Yeah, if it comes in with the Thalia's Lieutenant, gets a pump, and then you're swinging with it with a Noble Hierarch trigger, it's already tripled the amount of damage you would have got out of a Mana Strider. So, uh, um, no, it Not this, having flying is yes, pretty relevant. It is, it is relevant. That is relevant. Um, it also could see uh, play in a, a Naya Zoo deck or even just a Boros deck if you want to go budget, something yeah. like that. Um, it's just, it's, it's a high ceiling card. Uh, the, the power level on this card is very, very high. Um, and so I think it will see play. Uh, next, we're going to talk about another card that, this will be the fourth card now, that is a better version of a card that it previously exists. It's Unworn Ego for a colorless blue-black um, sorcery. Choose a card name. Search target opponent's graveyard, hand, and library for up to four cards with that name and exile them. That player shuffles their library, then draws a card for each card exiled, exiled from their hand this way. So, <clears throat> um, the card that this card is just a strict, strict better version of is cranial. I'm sorry, is a uh, yeah, a uh, cranial extraction. Um, basically. It comes down to this card and or surgical extraction as the new, um, as as the card going forward to remove from graveyard. 
opponents or from to interact with your opponent to remove something that's important. Yes. This card in a lot of ways is better though because for instance if like this card basically completely invalidates Valakut. Like you play this card and then you name Valakut the Mol Molten Pinnacle and they just lose. Like you're already playing black so you have removal for the for the uh, primeval titans. So they literally have nothing else. They're not going to beat you down with Steve. It's just not going to happen. Right? So you take their win con completely out of their deck before they even have access to it. Um, and for three mana, it's just it's super highly efficient. Um, so then it comes down to this also hates on Tron. It's another Tron hate piece. Um, if you're on the play, this is fantastic. You just take out of... And it, it's even better if they went and searched... They spent their turn searching for it uh, with uh, uh, with the map oh, yeah, <clears> and, so or so inscribing, you know, and they have it in their hand, and you just rip whatever it is out of their hand for that third Tron piece, and just you know get to go ham I mean, with it. Yeah, but they also get the draw card. They do get the draw cards. That but, that is but, that is relevant. But yeah. when they can't make Tron, it's going to be a while before they get to play those cards. Right. So. Um, uh, yeah, you can draw four more. You can draw four cards, but it's going to be turn seven before you can play the card. So yeah, it's it's going to be a minute. Yeah, by then you may have already drawn yeah. another unmoored ego and named card. Yeah, and or, you, yeah, because it's not like you're going to play a one of this. No, like you play as a two to three of. Yeah. Um and yeah, this this card is just the number. Yeah, you, de you definitely named card after the first one. Oh, yeah. They're never going to get to an log. Yeah. Um, if if they get to another log, something went wrong. Basically, really if there is any card, if there's any deck that has a linchpin card that it re revolves around, this it. card is that be the the best the best version of it because cranial extract. I'm sorry, the surgical extraction. The card had to be in the graveyard already, so this card allows you to do it without the card even being in there, which is important. Next up is. Uh, Conclave Tribunal is one white and three colorless. It's an enchantment with Convoke, and when it enters the battlefield, exile target non-land permanent opponent controls until Conclave Tribunal leaves the battlefield. Um, so this card, I don't. It may see some play in quite a few creature based decks just to act as removal. Um, but. A lot of your enchantment removal based stuff like this, that's kind of better, typically have flash on them. So that is <clears throat> Well, I'm gonna I'm gonna say where I believe this card goes into. And this goes into any deck that's playing lingering souls. They're like black white tokens, yeah, uh, Abzan. Because you can't I mean you you can technically block the turn they come out, but since you don't have anything to do with them, they can't attack. You know, if, if you if you play uh, Lingering Souls flashback, Lingering Souls, you have a free Oblivion Ring. Like, that's dumb. Yeah, that's pretty. Plus, true. you have four dudes on the table. <laughs> like, it's pretty good. Um, so this this card, I, I will will see play in in black white tokens. Yes. Um, it it's possible that it could see play in Abzan or. Um, uh, even something like knights, uh, the the uh, black white knight deck, um, it, or even the mono white deck. It deck. may see sideboard play in Morning Power Mancer. Yeah, it's possible. Yeah, because you make so many elemental tokens with well, the young, with the young Power Mancer. Souls. Yeah, yeah, or Lingering Souls. Yeah. So, um, <clears throat> this card, if you have a go wide strategy and you're playing white, this is it. They this also are now playing Goblin Rifle Master. Yep, 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 but. You would have to uh, those cards, the 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 rebel master, the tokens well, have to just, attack. Yeah, but I mean, yeah. you play it the you play it four. Yeah. So <clears throat> another good card. Um, so this card, uh, Molder Hulk, is a seven mana or sorry, uh, seven colorless green, black green uh, creature fungus fungus zombie. Uh, with undergrowth, this spell costs one less to cast for each creature card in your graveyard. When Motorhulk 
enters the battlefield, return target, excuse me, return target land card from your graveyard to the battlefield. It's a 6-6. Six, six. This card uh, just reads, uh, this card goes into uh, Vintage Dredge. Um, it could also see play in, in Modern and Legacy, but this for sure goes into Vintage Dredge because um, like the deck revolves around the fact that you have Bizarre Baghdad and this brings, if they, if they somehow get rid of uh, Bizarre with a Wasteland or something, uh, this now brings that card back and you're obviously filling up your graveyard. So um, essentially this could be a two mana 6-6 six, six, and you also get Bizarre back. Like that's, I've heard, I've heard that's pretty good value. That's pretty good. <laughs> that's, that's not bad. So, I mean, there, there's, like, Le Legacy Dredge, or I'm sorry, Vintage Dredge will literally mull down to, like, three cards just to make sure they have the Bizarre in their hand. It's, it's no one mana five five, but it's pretty close. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so this, this is a very, very strong card. Yes. Uh, next is the Nullhide Ferox for two green and two colorless. Creature Beast, it has Hexproof. You can't cast non-creature spells. And for two colors, Nullhide Ferox loses all abilities until the end of turn, and any player may activate this ability. And it also has, if a spell or an ability an opponent controls causes you to discard Nullhide Ferox, put it onto the battlefield instead of putting it into your graveyard, and it is a 6-6. Six, six. This card is very good against pretty much any black deck in any format. Facts. 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 Um, I mean, him, him the Turok. Him to throw up. Thoughts will so not like this card. No. <clears throat> um, this is actually going to be the card that keeps, uh, that, that is going to be the mirror breaker in like uh, Abzan or Junk yes. or, or I mean, uh, Jun. Um, uh, because when they go to play Liliana and plus Lily, then you just get a free 6 6. That's just dumb. Yes. Um, that with with Hexproof. And <clears throat> yeah. They're tapped out. Yeah, they, they, you know, you, you can't play uh, non-creature spells. That's fine, but the moment they go to pay the two to try and, the two extra mana to try and remove it, you can protect it with something. Yes. You know? um, I see this going in mainly, though, as the top end of uh, Mono Green Stompy in Modern. Um, yep. A 6-6 six, six for 4 uh, is a fantastic rate, and it has Hexproof. Um... So, like, one of the things about this card specifically is, like, on average, this card is probably going to beat out a lot of other cards. Um, so it's bigger than Gurdmack Angler, it's bigger than Tasker, it's bigger than what um, uh, Tarmogoyf is on average. I mean, on average, Tarmogoyf says 5-6. Yeah. So it's still a 6-6, six, six, so therefore you win in combat. It never gets to a 6-7. <clears throat> Yeah, I mean, if it does get to the 6-7, sure, but this, on on average, in modern, uh, Tarmogoyf is a 5-6, so this is still better than it. Um, um, it pretty much will most likely beat out a Death Shadow all the time, because yeah. if the Death Shadow ever swings, you just kill them on the backswing with this. Yeah, you, just, you swing them on the crack yeah. back, kill them. Um, so yeah, this, this is uh, going to find a home in uh, modern. Uh, the next is Beast Whisperer for two green and two colors. Creature <laughs> Elf Druid. Sorry. When you cast the creature spell, draw a card. For And it's a 2-3. Uh, this card is just busted. This card is stupid. Alright, so follow me with logic on this one. Alright. Wizards Band. Glimpse of Nature. Glimpse of nature. And it was only seen in elf decks. Yes. It is an elf. Yes. And has the same ability as Glimpse. Now, they don't care about it being four mana. Yeah, they're like, okay, well, we'll we'll try to overcost it. We'll make it four mana. Well, Heritage Druid still exists. Like, there's yes. there, this does. this card is so dumb. <laughs> like, I don't understand how they thought that this was gonna be okay. Um, you could. Play it as early as turn two. Yeah, yeah. That's that's so dumb. It's so dumb, that's dude. So dumb. I I this this card is 
going to see Planet Elves. Oh, definitely. With, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, the question is, is, is it going to see... Is it gonna see play in anything else? It possibly could see uh, play in um, in company decks. Or not the company decks. Uh, uh, I can see it being played um, in company decks. No, I was saying um, uh, uh, oh man, counters co uh, counters deck, the counters company deck. Oh yeah, sure. Um, <clears throat> uh, because they can just generate infinite mana yeah. and then start playing dudes, all the dudes, and then. Uh, cause whenever they play, uh, the, um, what's the one that allows you to scry? The serious here? No, no, not that one. Um, the human. The one that flips. Oh, um. The werewolf guy. I don't know. Oh man, what is his name? I was watching that thing earlier today. Yeah, I forget. But anyways, uh, that guy with this guy, like you can just find what you need, put it into play and you still, even if you're not comboing off, like. This allows you to keep digging further and further for your combo. And so, uh, yeah, I think it's going to be good. Yeah, oh, it'll be insane. Yeah, yeah. Glimpse of nature on a stick. Seems yes. good. Or just a cheaper soul of hearts. Yeah, so. way, way cheaper soul of hearts. Two, two mana yeah. cheaper. Yeah. Uh, next, is, <laughs> next is Citywide Bust uh, for two white and a colorless. It's a sorcery and destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. Actually, let's go back to that. This is a, just a better version of Soul of the Harvest too, by the way. Yeah. So that's. It's, I didn't even think about that. Yeah, yeah. it's two mana cheaper. I mean, it's <laughs> power and toughness is less, but. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry. Go ahead. Go back. Uh yeah. So destroy all creatures with toughness four or greater. Um. This is an interesting port white. Um. Obviously, don't believe. You don't main deck it in like control or anything. It just doesn't hit enough. I, I, um, I personally see this going in the night deck. Um, the, the, the white version of, oh, of knights. Yeah, yeah. Because uh, with uh, Knight Exemplar, all your guys are indestructible yes. anyways. So if they get above four, you're just doing a one-sided board wipe anyway. <clears throat> I can see that. Um, so I see this being played in the, in the sideboard, not in the main board. We're in the sideboard of that deck. Um, this also uh, is this also will be the mirror breaker for um, for uh, the junk uh, mirror. Um, so like you you play reserve and then let them extend out and then you wipe their board and then start playing the end. Right. <laughs> so um, I think I see I, I I can see it being played in that too. Yeah, I think. I think you could be seen in there. Um, can't really see any other. Three mana is six. is very very cheap for a board wipe. Right. Um, but the the three mana board wipe everybody's pretty much playing in the modern right now is Bantu slash Reckoning, which hits every creature. Yeah. Um, this also could see uh, uh, play in the uh, Death of Taxes deck as well. Yes, I can I can definitely see it in that one. That one's the only creature it'll hit right off the bat. Well, two creatures is. Uh, reality Smasher and uh, yeah, if, that, if, if, if you're playing the Eldrazi oh, version, version, yeah, if you're just if playing, you're playing, if you're playing o, OG version, then it doesn't hit anything. It doesn't, yeah, no. It doesn't hit anything. <laughs> so, um, and if you're playing the green white version, uh, it's under Gaddic T, mm -hmm. so that's that's important too. Yep. Uh, it, you won't, uh, it won't be a non go with a Gaddic T. Uh, next is Pelt Collector for one green. It's a creature, Elf Warrior. When another creature you control enters a battlefield or dies, if that creature's power is greater than Pelt Collector's, put a 1-1 counter on Pelt Collector. And as long as Pelt Collector has three or more 1-1 counters on it, it has trample, and it's a 1-1. This card is so dumb. It's, it's stupid. There's a reason. Pick, pick your copies up now. It's, yes. They're, they're going up more and more. So... Um, <clears throat> Good. It just the fact that it's when it enters the battlefield and dies is just insane. Uh, I mean, that the, was vexing devil. Yeah. The, so this card is being referred to as Experiment Two because it's literally just better than Experiment One. Yet another card that is better than its predecessor. Okay. 
this card with it with vexing devil is just absolutely absurd whenever you play turn one you play the one one turn two you play like burning tree emissary and then you take the green mana and make another pelt collector and the red mana you make a vexing devil they both get the trigger from the um from the from the it entering the battlefield now the first first one is already a 2-2 because of burning tree but now because of vexing devil it now becomes a 3-3 three, three, right and then vexing devil's gonna die and then if they choose to take four and let vexing devil die then now it becomes a 4-4 four, four trample on turn two that you get to swing with and you have another one that's a yeah three, three. the other one's a 3-3 three, three. Um, if they let the vexing devil stay on the board then you still have a 4-3 <laughs> Like the the whole your opponent gets to choose is still they that's a lose lose. Yeah. Um <clears throat> very much is this this is the like I'm a burn player and I've tested Vexen Double and, and Burn. It's an and too. and the the cra like because because the um because modern has such a high amount of removal plate in it, um I didn't think it was that good. However, this card literally changes the game on that. Um, it makes Vex and Double just infinitely better now. Yes. Um, there's a guy, uh, shout out to Magic Aids. He's the one who built the modern deck as we know it of humans. Um, humans did exist before he created the deck, but he basically built the version that people are playing now. Um, he just recently uh, made a deck that we're talking about with the pelt collectors and and and, and um, Vexing devil and he bas basically made a Naya zoo deck and It was absurd um, <clears throat> He also made a second video an update video to it essentially with the update trying to Make it uh, to where it also splashed back black. Sorry for us uh, um, for death shadow and um and uh, cycle card again, street rate. street rate. I don't know why I keep forgetting that card today. Um, so he tried it, and that was just getting a little bit too cute. But in the intro of that video, he stated that the um, that in between the time that he made the first video and that video, that two different people had already 5 0'd a, a league with his. Naya version of that list. So it's already seen in play. It's gonna be good. Get your copies now. Because it's gonna go up, I promise. It, you. it will be a lot more than and it's nine dollars. Yeah, it, it, it's technically an L, so it could be seen in play in L's too. But this this card is is already in a deck and it's a very powerful. It's a good deck. thing it's not an elf human. Yeah, oh my god. <laughs> human elves? Ridiculous. Alright. Uh all right. So next we have Runaway Steamkin for one red and a colorless creature elemental. And whenever you cast a red spell, if Runaway Steamkin has fewer than three 1-1 one -one counters on it, put a 1-1 one -one counter on Runaway Steamkin. And you can remove three 1-1 one -one counters from Runaway Steamkin and add three red mana to your mana pool. And it is a 1-1. One -one. Um, trying to think, like... A bit, I, I, I play Storm pretty often, and I, I've, I keep up with a lot of the groups, and I know they were interested in this, mostly for a mono-red version of Storm, not a, it, it, this wouldn't go in the, the blue, blue, uh, red version of Storm, mm -hmm. um, it's just, but it, a mon just the mono-red Storm does exist. Yes, yes, <clears throat> it does, um. I've been seeing a lot more people play Modern Red Storm with, um, as a, uh, they start playing uh, Dragon Storm. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they, uh, they kind of run one or two copies, like, of, uh, what is it, um, just a couple of different dragons, the... Thunderball Hellkite. Thunder, Thunderball Hellkite. Uh, yeah, bunch, Storm, Storm yeah, Breath. Storm Breath. Um, there's one more, I believe. Uh, what's the other one that has haste? Uh, Glorybringer? Maybe it's, no, no, it's not Glorybringer. Maybe, maybe it's those two that I'm thinking of. Those two are really powerful. Though. Yeah. Thunderball, yeah. Thunderball those two and, just, and Storm Breath are really Those two just pretty much, yeah. you, you <clears throat> pretty much just win with those. 
This card, while it doesn't have a genuine home yet, it's being play tested in a few different decks. Yes. Um, it's very, very powerful. <clears throat> um, it could be used just straight up as a value creature too, where you know you play it in something like a goblin's deck, um, and then you know you storm off with some goblins, and now you have access to extra mana yes. at instant speed if you want. Um, so you can remove, you know, the three counters and, you know, uh, use one to goblin grenade, you know, somebody or lightning bolt somebody. Like, yep. after you swung in with the damage, <clears throat> then you remove the counters off the top right. and then, you know, close the game out. So, um, quite a few different applications with this card. Uh, just doesn't have a home yet, but I have a 100%... Um, certainty that it will see in something. It, it, it eventually will. Um, it just... We're going to keep, yeah. keep working on it. Yeah. We're going to keep working on it. It's time to come. Yes. Next is... Oh, man. Talk about this card because I'm getting it's, everybody with it. Uh, creeping right? Chill. The, the cost doesn't matter. Uh, one black and three <laughs> colors. So dumb. Creeping Chill does three damage. To, this doesn't even matter. Creeping Chill does three damage to each opponent, and three you gain three life. This is the part that matters. When it's put into your graveyard from your library, you may exile it. If you do, Creeping Chill does three damage to each opponent, and you gain three life. This is seeing play in every dredge deck right now, and they've dropped the land, <clears throat> going down to seventeen. They went up on Golgari Thugs. They're, they're playing more dredgers because of how <clears throat> busted this card is. It, you just you can't counter it unless you're playing Disallow or Stifle Bird. No. Uh, or if you're playing Legacy Stifle. Sure. I mean, it, you got me. You got for a free card, you, you counted something. Sure. Ma but, Magic breaks the game when they do two things. Make fast mana available or they give you free access to free spells. This is one of those. This is a free spell. And not only is it a free spell, it's already going it into a viable deck. It can't be countered by normal means. Right. So, unless you have, like I said, the, the stifle effect, the, the ability to, to counter or trigger the ability, you are going to do a three point or a six point life swing off of one card. <clears throat> and if you hit two or more? Yeah, it's, just... it's gross. And as a burn player, this oh. card is dangerous because they can do it on turn one or even turn two on the play and I don't have the ability or access to skull crack yet. So they're going to be able to get life in before I can even do anything. Sounds like you need some Simeon Spirit Guide in your life. <laughs> Simeon Spirit Guide. It's a counter of one card. Dude. It's so ridiculous. Um, the, the power level of this card is so dumb. Like, they've already shown people playtesting with it. Screenshots of, like, a Stinkweed Imp uh, dredging five and hitting two of these off of the dredge. Like, it's a good thing Gold Guard is your control. Is that, the end. Yeah, I know, right? Like, God, dog, no, this would be so absurd. Like, it already is absurd, but, like, this would make it just, oh my God, this card is really, really it, it, powerful. Dredge is definitely seeing the comeback. There's, there's, if you're playing Dredge and not playing this card now, you're, 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 you're wrong. wrong. You're wrong. You're, you're just completely wrong. wrong. Oh, God, gross. All right, next up is another deck that I don't particularly care for, but we're going to talk about it for this card uh, called Dawn of Hope. <clears throat> it's one white, one colorless enchantment. Um, it says, whenever you gain life, you may pay two colorless mana. If you do, draw a card. Then it says... For three colorless mana and a white, create a 1-1 one, one white soldier creature token with life no, lifelike. So this is basically a better version of Mentor of the Meek and Soul Sisters. Reason being is if the opponent board wipes, Mentor of the Meek does you nothing now because it's in the graveyard. This card not only allows you to rebuild but when you rebuild, you then you still get to draw cards. So <clears throat> I foresee this going in, <clears throat> into Soul Sisters um, to replace Mentor 
and basically just be a better version of that because um, Soul Sisters typically outside of um, some some decks do play uh, Honor the Pure, but this this card um, would be the only other enchantment played in that deck, and and I could see this being ran as a three of probably because. Um, one of the things that Soul Sisters struggles with, or and the reason why they chose to add Mentor the Meek to begin with, was because it it loses gas. So they need a way to refill their hand. This does that. And then the fact that there's the synergy of it, the soldier it creates has lifelink. So whenever you are do combat with that soldier, then you pay two mana and draw a card. <laughs> like Sounds like a combo. It's it seems like a good card. It's like it does everything for you on the same card. Yep. Um, uh, so this card is a card that actually I've heard nobody talk about either. Um, out may, maybe some standard stuff or whatever. I've but never heard anybody talk about that. but I, I'm I'm willing to put it down that this card is going to see uh, play in modern and soul sisters. Next up is Goblin Crater Maker for one red and a colorless creature Goblin Warrior. You may pay one and sacrifice Goblin Crater Maker to choose either Goblin Crater Maker deals two damage to target creature or you can destroy target colorless non-land permanent. It's a 2-2. Two -two. I, okay, so I am in a group, we were supposed to be going at Dallas and I'm in a group chat for this and they were arguing about this for two days this card <laughs> mitch is in this group chat too oh really yeah okay. and yeah. he doesn't like this card really he hates this card hmm because well, he's not a goblin fan anyway no he's not but his his thing <laughs> about this card is well i understand why he hates it because it, it hates on the look no it's not that it's not affinity because we were strict, like strictly talking about tron yeah tron if and even then, like with Affinity, if you're using this, like, like let's say, let's say you're using this to kill Karn. If they're at Karn already, you're pretty much dead. This card's like, it's, like, they have Karn mana, next turn they'll have Ugin mana, or Oluwa mana. It's, you're not really doing yeah. anything to save you. It's, I can, I can see why people want to play it, and, and definitely, like, in 8, eight whack. You, mm -hmm. you do yeah. play it. I mean, yeah, it goes. You, it goes you in don't the goblin stand decks. a chance. <laughs> it goes in the goblin decks, both yes. modern and legacy. Yes. Um, uh, reason being is uh, this also does stuff like it destroys uh, ensnaring bridges. Like if you're coming yes. across a deck that yes. has ensnaring bridge, or um, uh, um, uh, something like a batter skull. Right, if they're playing a the batter school, right? Like anything that's gonna because you're playing goblins, you don't want them gaining life. So or or preventing you from doing attacking. So if you can blow up their ensnaring bridge, blow up their batter school, um, you could technically still blow up their uh, their uh, worm coil engine, which is something that blow up a chalice. Uh, <clears throat> blow up a chalice, yeah. Um, this has a lot of utility. Um, not just for Tron, but it, it has a lot of utility for goblins specifically. Yeah. Um, and it's cheaper than the new goblin that they uh, came out with um, that you sack a goblin to, just, to uh, destroy a target artifact, the, uh, yes. the new yes. four mana one. So this is two mana and then you pay one to do its effect. And don't forget, it does two damage to target creature. That may be relevant in some yeah. possibilities. Um, so You can that, swing two creature blocks that has four toughness yeah. and then just kill it. Yeah. So it, it's well, yeah. it's uh th th this card has has good utility and uh, we'll see play. Next up, this is a card that I will admit that I missed, and I'm really mad at myself that I missed it upon um, initial evaluation. <sighs> Plague Crafter is a black and two colorless creature, human shaman. It says whenever a plague crafter enters the battlefield, each player sacrifices a creature or a planeswalker. Each player who can't discard a card. So basically, he forgot to mention it's just a strictly better version of another card too. Yeah, yeah, we're gonna get to that part in a second, and it's a three-two. So the card that this is infinitely better 
then it's predecessor of is Fleshbag Marauder. Oh, don't forget Merciless and Victor. Yeah. So th both of these cars are just like so. Not only does it have one more toughness than Mer uh, than a uh, Fleshbag Marauder, but it also can hit Planeswalkers, which is relevant, um, especially for humans because uh, the humans deck in Modern have a tough time kind of dealing with Planeswalkers. Yep. Um, and so even if they have a completely empty board, they still have to discard a card. That is crazy. Yep, playing against the like, though. Just being a discard. Yeah, so the like this card is probably going to replace Sin Collector in the sideboard of humans because Sin Collector still didn't hit Planeswalkers. Correct. This does. Um, especially Planeswalkers that are already in play. It's also easier to cast. Very much easier to cast. Um, so, the ability that it, like, like they're never going to be negative of card of some sort. They're going to be always card disadvantaged at some point for this card. And it's just a good rate. It's a 3-2 three, for 3. Like, that's still really good stats. Why they had to make it human, I do not know. They just need to stop doing that. As a whole. And that's it. We'll end on the card that uh, that uh, I was completely missed. I missed somehow. I have no idea how I did that. Flavor text is good. My power is generosity in a way. I give my survivors an appreciation for their lives. <laughs> yeah, that's pretty good. That's pretty good. Um, Sounds like the human stack in general. Yeah, yeah, exactly. Um, so overall, this card's power creep is very high very very high yes and being that i'm a rakdos fan myself i'm really hoping no, no. that that next set you're a missouri player yeah. so you should be hoping for next next set too. I, I, i'm excited for next set yeah i, I like so, rakdos i like rakdos but me as a rakdos player i'm i'm looking at the power level of this set overall and yeah. saying that if the power level is this high and they continue that over to next set, then right. that means cool. that, that, one after that too? yeah. But at least at least that'll cover all the ten guilds, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, that if they put all, that much power level into the next set too, then a lot of the blue white control players have a lot to look forward to. Uh, the me myself, the 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 Rakdos players have a lot to look forward to. The 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 guild that typically has been the worst of all, Simic. Um, just power wise, level wise, not not to say anything negative about Simic, but just overall, like Simic's power level throughout the every time we've been to Ravnica has not been great. But it, it's even pretty much just like throughout all of Magic history. Oh, there's been some cool stuff like Skip, Simic Sky Swallower and I stuff mean, like that. Sure, but I mean <clears throat> Simic's just. I mean you have green, which yeah, it has big creatures, but blue doesn't. Right, typically. Yeah, blue. Just There's a tempo. Yeah. Yeah. So, so, so they're kind of just overall. If they can boost that color, that would yes. be awesome that too. Would, just that would, that, that would to me that would complete the color pie um, well because that, they they've kind of been the the stepchild the entire time, right? So if if they can bring those things together, um, like I am really looking forward to next set. But this set is just super super sweet. Um, I'll end with this. So, unless you have something else you want to say. Okay. okay. So, I made a statement uh, when the set was fully spoiled that this set, card for card, had more cards in it that is going to see legacy in modern play and vintage play more than any other um, set in the last year combined. Okay, now I was technically slightly off, but even with that said, it took a almost an entire year's worth of sets to even match. Excuse me, even match the amount of cards that are going to be tested and or played in this one set. That's crazy. Yep. So the this is this has done a lot for Magic in general. And I think that this 
is going to be, I, I think Wizards is really amping it up specifically because um, of the, 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 this particular block. Um, because they're trying to end the story, or it seems like they're trying to end the story with Nicol Bolas. So it, it seems like they're going to try to go out with a bang. And so raising the power level up, giving us back the shock plans and stuff. Like I'm talking about, like we talked about all new cards. We didn't talk about any reprints like Globin Electromancer or uh, Disdainful Stroke or stuff like that. We're not even talking about that stuff. Those things are already seen in play. We're talk we strictly talked about new cards that have potential and are already starting to see play. Didn't even talk about my favorite card in the set. Huh? Didn't even talk about my favorite card in the set. The what's, your, what's your favorite card? My favorite card in the set? The Bond Visitation. Oh, well, do you think it has possibility to be seen in the modern or later? I, I know people have been talking about possibly playing it in black white tokens. Like the possibility. That's tough. Yeah. It's, Five minutes is a lot. It's, it is a lot. <laughs> If but, I can book it, would be busted though. Oh yes, <laughs> but if you can get there, yeah, dude, I can see that. I can, no, if, if you if if you can get there with it, oh yeah, in black white tokens, that card is the I mean, better. You're, you're already at five man. But Next that is turn, play a secure the waste. I don't whatever. Yeah, secure the waste for five. That's yeah. That's twenty twenty damn power on the field right then and there. Yeah, that's, it 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 is a very 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 powerful card. Oh, yeah. Um, five mana is a lot to ask. That's kind of why I didn't talk about the uh, five mana, um, five mana flying trample six six. Oh, Doom Whisper. Yeah, Doom Whisper. That's why I didn't talk about that card either. Is because five mana is a lot to ask of a card. Um, but it's a very. But both of them are very, very, very powerful cards. For like um, a thousand year storm, that's that's gonna see. A lot of commander play. Yeah, yeah. That card man, that, that's even, that's six man. And I was actually so. talking to one of my buddies last night. Like, <clears throat> honestly, think about building a Grixis deck built around that. Oh, that'd be sweet. Dude. Yeah. yeah, yeah. Like, just, like turn six, you just play that and go the next turn, and then um, it also counts for X spells. Like, yeah. Just torment the by them. <laughs> yeah, that'll work. That'll work. It's, it's so, so um. Overall, this is a sweet set. Loving it. Um, gonna do a lot of play testing. Yep. And uh, you know, we're gonna uh, hopefully be able to do the next set, do a review on that one as well. Whatever it's called. Yeah. Um, I, I can't alliances? remember. Is it alliances? That might be it. Alliances or Ravnica? Something. I don't know. This, whatever the next set is, we're gonna do another set of a review on that. So look forward to that. But uh, thank you guys for watching and have a good day.